Well, the A's just finished a series with the Angels, and to everyone's amazement, they are going to be playing different teams this week. Is that legal? You are Locked On A's, your daily Oakland A's podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, A's fans, and hello, Angel fans, and welcome to a Locked On A's, Locked On Angels crossover. I am your host for the Locked On A's show. My name is Paul Francis Sullivan, but please, please call me Sully. I'm also the host of the Locked On MLB podcast. Follow us at Locked On A's on Twitter, or whatever it's called now, and on Instagram. And uh, I'm your pal, Sully. I'm at Sully Base on Twitter, Sully Base on podcast on Instagram. And joining me today is... John Fresh, is that is that how we didn't rehearse this ahead of time? I know, I know. <laughs> it's, it's like jazz, but it's that's like right, jazz. That's right. Yeah, I got no improv skills. John Fresh, uh, one half of the Super Halo Bros, one half of Locked On Angels. My brother Mike and I host the Locked On Angels show together. That's right. And uh, uh, by a quirk in the schedule, the A's and the Angels play each other 150 times this year. Evidently, that's right. Is that's it right. just me? Or it's like. That's the they're the only two teams that play each other. Yeah, Same for the Philadelphia series, they're just it's every day. It's Angels A's, Angels A's, Angels A's. It was uh, nine games in like two weeks, I think. Is something ridiculous like that? It's so. absurd. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely absurd. It's like, do you know what it felt like when the A's were playing the Angels? It felt like it was a family gathering, and this was the kids' table, and they gave they wanted to just you go sit in there. You can play, you know, Hungry Hungry Hippos or watch your cartoons, <laughs> and we're going to be in here talking as adults. But the A's and Angels, you can go color. Right, or, exactly. You know, exactly. Or now would be a world hand you a tablet. It used to be you go color, you know. But Stay inside the lines, kids. <laughs> that's right. Uh, well, look, at, um, there's not much to review in terms of the series. Uh, the last two games were actually kind of interesting. Uh, the just the Saturday game, Shea Langoliers hit a three run home run in the first. And to be to give the Angels credit, they pitched well the rest of the day. And uh, that was the day Anderson was pitching, right? Yeah, we were all kind of wondering is Tyler Anderson even going to start because he's been so many in so many trade rumors and there's so many teams that could use Tyler Anderson right now. So we were all kind of shocked that he got that start. And and uh, yeah, so so uh, color us surprise, color inside the lines surprised Sully. <laughs> um, the same thing every time Brent Rooker comes to the plate. Like, is he still there? Is he still yeah, there? Yeah. He's, uh, by the way, uh, I went to a, a, a San Francisco Giants game yesterday with uh, my cousin. Um, my uh, cousin just graduated from college. He'd never been to San Francisco before, and we he's my technically we we figured this out. Technically, he's my first cousin once removed because ah. he's my cousin. He's my cousin Kathy's son, but eh, heck with that. He's my cousin. Right. And uh, we went to a, a Giants game, and they were playing the Rocks. And at one point, they they pinch hit for one of their starting outfielders, like very early in the game. And we just turned to each other like, I bet he was traded. I bet he was traded. But it turns out, no, he had like a little injury. But like ah. when, at this point, if the Rockies or the A, because there's so few non-contenders. Yeah. If you're a Rockies fan or a Marlins fan or an Angels fan, or an A's fan, um, or evidently a Rays fan, as they have a winning record, but they're still trading everything that isn't nailed down. Right. Um, anytime that someone's removed a mid-game, you just assume they're off to Baltimore or Philadelphia or New York or someplace. Oh, yeah. I was at the game on Saturday between the Angels and A's, and uh, definitely definitely on hug watch. But Carlos Estevez got traded before the game, so I missed, yeah. out, I missed out on all the hugs there. <laughs> yeah. I love that the it trended that that's also Charlie Sheen's real name. That I think that's 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 really cool. But hey, yo, good for the Phillies. They 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 traded Sir Anthony, by one of the best names in baseball, Sir Anthony Dominguez. Oh yeah. They essentially swapped. By the time the trades were done, they flipped. They replaced Sir Anthony Dominguez with Carlos Estevez in their mm-hmm. bullpen, and mm-hmm. I think that's an upgrade. Uh, and yeah, I think that. Good time. Yeah, and um, they got what's his name, Austin uh, um, Austin from, Hayes. Austin Hayes. Yeah, uh, which I thought was odd because you know he was such a. It's like when they trade away Trey Mancini. It's like they're trading away someone so popular amongst the fans and in the clubhouse. Um, I, I know that that can be overrated, 
but uh, I saw it happen when they traded Cespedes mm-hmm. for John Lester, which I talked about on a, sh- a show not too long ago, where I said that's one of the most remarkable trades in baseball history because Red Sox fans hated it and A's fans hated it. <laughs> I've never seen a trade hated by both sides. Normally, one side got hosed, right? But you had an astonish- astonishingly uh, popular outfielder in Cespedes. You have a beloved homegrown ace of the defending World Series champion in Boston. They were flipped because the Red Sox, everyone will forget they had some kind of Scrooge McDuck pile of money. And at, like from that moment on, the A's went from the best record of the American League to being the visiting team in the wild card game and blowing that because John Lester refused to throw over to first. Right. Although, I do blame Bob Melvin more for having Lester start that seventh inning. You had a deep bullpen. As Lester goes, I think they, I to this day, I believe they had him go into the eighth and try to get through that inning as a middle finger to say, no, this is why we got him. We want him <laughs> to be the ace. Like, no, bring in Gregerson and do a little end this nightmare and face the Angels. Right, right. Well, and then the Royals swept all the way till the World Series that year. Yeah, they and did. And lost to the Giants. But I was uh, at game. I was at Game Three of the World Series. In, nice. In San, with the last game I ever went to with my dad was the Game Three of the World Series. But. Oh, that's awesome. Cespedes uh, that year had the uh, incredible throw from left field at Angel Stadium to gun down Howie Kendrick at home. Yeah. And uh, I went to the A's game on Saturday. Angels A's on Saturday with my uh, former A's fan friend Julio and he was there for that that game too and so that was, yeah incredible and then then he was gone then he was it gone. didn't help it didn't help matters that the next year he was homering left and right for the Mets in the World right Series. <laughs> but um uh so, but yesterday's game was bizarre because the obviously the A's won the first three games of the series and then they jump out to a six nothing lead and I'm I'm at I'm at Oracle Park with my cousin and I see on the hand operated scoreboard Six nothing Oakland, and I'm like, oh boy, uh, this is going to be a four game sweep in Anaheim. And uh, by the time I I got some peanuts and cracker jacks, and quite frankly, I didn't care if I was coming back at that point. <laughs> but um, I looked up, and it was eight to six Angels. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What, what to, uh, describe that from your point of view? Well, it it comes down to the fact that. Uh, there's a lot of young guys on this team and, you know, even, even when they go down six, nothing that early, this is the first time in years where I felt like, yeah, they, they could still come back. And so there's a, there's a lot of hungry young guys on this team that have a lot of fight in them. And then Taylor Ward was the one who hit the grand slam. Right. And that guy, uh, who's also in trade talks, by the way, he's so streaky and, and, you know, a month ago, everybody wanted him. Then his July happened and now not really a lot of people want him. The Angels don't have to trade him. He's got two more years of control, so they can kind of wait out a good deal for him. But he he hit the grand slam. But it's the young guys, man, like Neto and Shawnawell and Ohapi, just some really exciting players to watch. And, you know, it's, it's that kind of season where I know the Angels aren't going to go anywhere, but it's fun to watch the growth and the development of the young guys. And then to see them fight back the way that they did is that's kind of what we hang our hat on right now when we're watching Angels games in terms of, What's exciting about this team? It's the young core. Usually they're not the ones screwing it up. It's usually the veterans surrendering a lot of runs or it's, you know, a veteran hitter didn't come through or whatnot. But to see the young guys succeed like that is a lot of fun. All right. Well, look, we come back. We have some conversations because when the when John and I were talking before the show, I said, I want to talk about where the A's and Angels are going. And I think we mean that in more ways than one. Hey, today's show is brought to you by our friends at Stitch Fix. Guys, Sully, myself included, it's time to upgrade (laughs) the wardrobe. Throw out the old t-shirts, the worn out pants. Let our friends at Stitch Fix help you to look good. With Stitch Fix, it's easy to upgrade your style with the help of a professional stylist that helps you find new on-trend favorites that are going to work for you. Here's how it works. You just give Stitch Fix stylist your size your style, your budget preferences, keep it within, you know, your wallet, whatnot. And then they send you five just for you pieces, plus other outfit recommendations and pro styling 
advice. You're not going to be wearing jerseys and baseball hats all the time. They're going to make you look real good. You keep what works and you send back the rest. So keep what you like, send back what you don't. And the good news, shipping, returns, exchanges, they're always free. There's no subscription required. Stitch Fix makes it super easy. You don't need to go shop and look around. You can take care of it right from your computer. Save time and effort when you order with Stitch Fix. If you want to get started at stitchfix.com slash MLB, you can get $20 off your first fix. Stitchfix.com slash MLB for $20 off. Again, stitchfix.com slash MLB. You got to redeem it within seven days of signing up, and it does not include kid fixes on this offer. So that might be something you want to check out later. But Stitch Fix, it's style that makes you feel as good as you look. Stitch Fix, let's look good. Hey, where is your hub for all of your sports news, your sports takes, your sports opinions? Let me tell you something. I believe you should be making the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories in all of sports. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't miss analysis, opinions, takes the news, streaming 24-7 on the YouTubes and on the free Amazon Fire TV channel, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. All right, we are doing a crossover of Locked On A's and Locked On Angels, uh, two teams that are... A lot closer than I think Angel fans want to be to the <laughs> A's right now. Uh, you know, I mean, look, I, I do think the Angels are going to finish ahead of the A's. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is we're as we're entering um, August in just a few days, I have a feeling that if I had polled Angel fans, one of their goals for the year was not, hey, let's finish ahead of the A's. Right. I right. think that was written, that was filed that under a given for a lot of, uh, uh, but right now, um, basically three games separate the two. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, and, and coming into this season and, and seeing some of the spring training games between the A's and the angels, <laughs> there's part of me that went, there's some really good guys on this A's team. And, and yeah. look at the end of the day, like, yes, I'm a diehard angels fan, but I appreciate good baseball. And I recognize when good baseball is being played. And so to see guys like Lawrence Butler and Brent Rooker do the things that they're doing right now. Look, how Brent Rooker was not an all-star is beyond me. And why teams are not chomping at the bit to get him on their team right now is Makes just no down. It, like we've, we've got what, like 20, 27 hours left until this deadline is over. So somebody get on the phone and get Brent Rooker on their team because teams desperately need him. But yeah, I, to be honest with you, it at best, it was like, well, maybe the angels can get to 500 this year because that's not somewhere they've finished in the past couple of years and to get there everything had to go right but they were also asking a lot of you know young pitchers like Patrick Sandoval and Reed Detmers and Chase Silseth to do a lot of the things that they've never done before including pitch in a five-man rotation because right. in the time that they've been angels Shohei's been here so they've been part of a six-man rotation so they asked a lot of these young guys well now Sandoval's hurt Detmers is in AAA figuring it out it looks like Chase Silseth got hurt again in AAA. So the Angels are are they have a ragtag rotation right now. Um, Jose Soriano is a lot of fun to watch, and they've converted him from an, a reliever to a starter. But yes, at the end of the day, I think reasonable Angel fans would have said mm, 500 at best. I don't think that we thought we were going to be going anywhere because they didn't do anything over the offseason solely. They added a bunch of relief no, pitching and that was, they it. also lost, they lost the key player. If I remember. Yeah. What was his name? Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> the, uh, the homegrown Dodger legend Shohei Otani. Right. That's, that's um, how he gets treated these days. <laughs> um, yeah. By the way, just so you know, um, even with the loss yesterday, the, uh, the A's are 14 and eight in July and have a positive 43 run differential for the month. Incredible. And they've hit the most home runs in the league this month? Is that yeah, true? Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, and they've really been – I mean, they've been exciting to watch. And Butler, It's they've been a lot of fun. And believe me, uh, you know, the first month was kind of cool because they got to May 4th. They got to 500 on May 4th. They're like, yeah. whoa, wait a – what? Um, their record in May was 9-19. and 19. And July and June said, hold my beer. <laughs> and they lost 20 out of 27 games Oof. in June. Yeah. 
Yeah. And uh, you're looking up going, okay, this team's going to, this team will lose 170 games. That's what I thought out of 162. <laughs> um, but then, you know, the July, um, they're 14 and eight. And, you know, if they, I, I kept thinking about um, the 1981, because I'm a lunatic. And that was the year when there was the strike. And instead of just, when the strike resumed, they, they didn't just say, okay, what were our records? Let's just take that to the end of the year. They said, okay, we're going to do a second half. And they started at zero. Now, because of that, the Cincinnati Reds had the most wins in Major League Baseball. Wow. But did, did not qualify for the postseason. Ouch. Because they finished, it, they were half a game out at the strike, and they finished like one or a half a game out at the end of the second half. So they combined for more wins than Los Angeles and Houston, but because they didn't finish first in either of the the times out, uh, they were they were not allowed to play in the postseason. And the Dodgers wound up winning the World Series that year. Brutal. <laughs> um, I kept thinking if they had had uh, uh, the the half seasons on this one, would the A's be contending? Right. Right. Yeah, they'd be there. They'd be there somewhere. Absolutely. Yeah, and then they'd probably take on the Mariners and the Astros would be the Reds of this year. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, well, you know, the people listening to this show, and I know I listen, um, know that I took a sojourn to Sacramento, which I think, I actually think the situation for the A's is worse than people think. Mm -hmm. Because Sacramento, it's a minor league stadium. They're sharing it with an affiliate, which makes absolutely move the Giants affiliate to Fresno, have the Fresno team play in Lancaster. A major league team shouldn't be sharing its stadium and its scheduling because minor league scheduling is different right, than right. major league scheduling. It's insane. But the, the clubhouse is in left field and you seem and um, and but it's I was there on a July afternoon and it was so hot. That I couldn't turn my cell phone on because it kept saying turn, your cell phone's overheating. Wow! And and I, and I told this story in a previous episode, but I there's no one they, they have what they call the the what the the um, usher there calls them shade shifters that everyone just sort of finds the shade. No one sits yeah. in the seats. I don't blame them. And I was um, I sat in my seat at one point, and an usher came up to me, and I thought he was going to check my ticket, and he asked me if I was okay. <laughs> <laughs> And they want to put 20,000 people in there generating body heat. Oh my gosh, man. It's just you know, it's, be... it's going to be a disaster. It's going to be a complete disaster. If you thought it was embarrassing seeing the Oakland Coliseum empty, imagine Sutter Health Park empty. Once the novelty wears out, and they figure if I'm going to go to a hot baseball game, I might as well go to the River Cats because that's at least cheaper. Yeah. Well, um, and, and, and the they're putting in the artificial turf, aren't they, on the field? Yeah. So that's, it's, you know, it's going to be 110 in the seats and 120 on the field. It's Yeah. It's ask about not... when Reggie, well, I think it was Reggie Smith of LA. I may be getting the name wrong, but his cleats started melting on the AstroTurf in St. Louis in the game in the 70s. Now, granted, it won't be that AstroTurf, which was basically asphalt that they used in right. the uh, in the seventies. That's why I said, "Heck, we're going to make the, if these balls are going to be bouncing like a rubber ball, we're just going to have dudes, uh, you know, stealing bases left and right because right. that's what this is going to be about." But uh, it's going to be a disaster. Now, I'm bringing that up for a reason. Um, once this, I, I I I fervently don't believe the A's are moving to Las Vegas. I've said it over and over again. I'm with I don't you think I don't think if Vegas is take a look at this and go like. We don't need to do. We, we haven't spent a dollar. We haven't put one shovel in the ground. Right. Uh, let's build another freaking pirate ship here or something and make <laughs> more money. Um, now, the question I then pivot to is the Angels. Mm -hmm. Would they make more sense? The Angels are in a strange situation. They draw well. The Angels draw well. They play in an older stadium. They want a new stadium. I think it's insane to move out of Anaheim because they draw well. They have a very strong fan base in Orange County. Yeah, you can um, see that even when we're even when we're having as many down years as they've had. Right, and even this year without the the draw of of Trout. Shohei Ohtani and Mike Trout, like people are still showing up, man. Yeah, they, they draw well. They make very they make a lot of money uh, in their media deal, but you get the sense that they're they're 
kicking the tires elsewhere if they don't get a new stadium. What do you think? What is going to happen with the state? To me, uh, the, I'll just say my point of view, it's idiotic to move them out of Anaheim. Right. There's enough room in Anaheim if they want to knock down the stadium to build a new one nearby it. Do that. Right. But that's a great location for a ballpark. You siphon off people from Disneyland. It's right off the five. It's close enough to Los Angeles, but you get all of Orange County, get all of Riverside County, you get all of San Bernardino. Everything is close. It's that's why they should be called the California Angels mm -hmm. because it, it 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 basically takes care of everything that is in L.A. or San Diego. Mm -hmm. um, and it'd be insane to move them. But welcome to Major League Baseball. Yeah. Uh, so I want your take of what's happening, and please, please avoid the mess we're in here. Yeah. Well, they have they they have a deal in place till 2029 and right. then they have an option that goes to 2038 i believe in terms okay. of a of a lease deal between the city and the team Artie marino is 78 years old and so i don't think that there's you know don't wish anything bad on on anybody personally but i don't know if there's enough time for him to make a move mm -hmm. solely like even if he even if he wanted to you know, it runs through 2029. He would have to break that lease agreement and move the team somewhere else. So I just don't see it happening, especially with how old he is. It's it's not worth his time. It's not worth the effort. And I think he recognizes that he is in a good market. And if he were somewhere else, they might not have the loyal fan base that they have in Anaheim and coming from the surrounding areas, like you mentioned, Riverside County, right. San Bernardino County, all those things. So in my opinion, I think there's a lot of posturing but I don't think anything is going to happen at the end of the day. And look, he is probably very, very quiet these days because of the, the bribery scandal with the mayor of Anaheim who wanted, you know, a political donation from the angels in order to push the stadium deal through. Well, that all fell apart. So I don't know that Artie is going to be puffing his chest or doing anything like that right now, because after that whole debacle, I, I think it's just better to, to lay low. And again, He's old, so I don't yeah. see how a move would benefit him in any way in in this lifetime. If you know what I'm well, saying. <laughs> let me ask, let me ask you a question, um, and then we'll we'll go to a break in a second here. But is there a chance he may say, "Hey, I've had this team for a couple of decades. I'm going to be 80 years old in a few years. Why don't I just cash out, mm -hmm. make my make my billions?" Is, I mean. And if that's the case, can we start a GoFundMe? I would, you know, I mean, I'm not an Angels fan, but I would, I would own the Angels. Well, look, that's the thing is, is for everything I see the A's going through and, and A's fans watching this know that I am in your corner because more than anything, I want to get back to fun, competitive baseball between the A's and the Angels like we were yes. even just a decade ago. It was so much mm -hmm. fun and competitive and and everything. And and so I, I'm with you 100%. Um, and so when it comes to the angels and their ownership in my dream solely, he sells the team today, right? Like it's mm -hmm. just, it, they gave all of our hopes up two years ago when they put it on the market. And, and so really the best thing for this franchise moving forward is if, and when he sells the team, it's just, I don't know what he's holding on for anymore. He, he, you know, wanted to sell it. And then he realized, oh, you know what? I'm a big baseball fan here. And, and to be honest with you, I think him wanting to sell in the first place, again, goes back to what happened with the mayor and the city right. and the FBI, the, you know, the FBI. Right. And I think he got a little bit scared. And then once that dust settled, he said, all right, maybe I don't have to sell. So listen, it would be a dream come true if Artie Marino sold ASAP, because that would just give so much more hope for this franchise. Well, um, I wish I had a great announcement to make. But the only announcement I have to make is regarding something else. The only announcement I have to make is regarding the always reliable supplyhouse.com. Now, get supplies from the website that is made for skilled trades. Find thousands of parts from hundreds of brands in just a couple of clicks at supplyhouse.com. Supplyhouse.com gives you 24-7 access to a huge selection of plumbing, HVAC, and electrical supplies with faster delivery everywhere in the U.S. You need help with an order? Get industry-leading after-sales service 
from the friendly and knowledgeable customer support team and talk to a real person every single time. And then there's great news for plumbers, technicians, and contractors. Being a pro has its perks. Trade industry professionals can join their free Trade Master program for free shipping and serious discounts on every order. Order 100,000 parts and supplies. And over 100,000 pros already trust the Trade Master program to deliver results. Apply for your membership today. Get a competitive edge on every order at supplyhouse.com slash TM. Save money and time when you order online. Order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical supplies from supplyhouse.com. Real people, real service. Supplyhouse.com. Hey, this is a reminder that Locked On has created the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. It's on YouTube, and now it's available on the Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channel app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you with all of the best talent from the Locked On Podcast Network. Check out Locked On Sports Today and check out 24-7. See if you can figure out when my screen that has the copy went out. That's a fun, <laughs> it's a fun game for you to play. Good times. See, Good times all see around. You could find the exact time code where the screen went off. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I'm a baseball fan first and foremost. Oh, by the way, you can see over my shoulder. I have, uh, I have the old school angels uniform. I saw that. I saw that. They yes. wore those uniforms. They look so those good. Ama- those, and my mom was watching the game. I'm at my mother's house for a little bit here. My mom and I were watching the game. And my mom looked at me and said, those are great uniforms. Mm-hmm. I said, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Those are those are the Rod Carew, Brian Downing, Fred Lid, Mike Witt, Bobby Gritch specials. They're That's wearing them all week, too. I know. They were, it's like, am I watching the Naked Gun? What's going on here? <laughs> um, I will say my favorite... Uh, my favorite Angels hat. You're wearing my second favorite Angels mm-hmm. hat. My favorite Angels hat is still the one that says CA. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think those are amazing. I think those yeah. are beautiful. Those are the ones I grew uh, up with too before they switched to Anaheim again. Yeah. Yeah. I want, I would love it if they wore, I don't mind the red hats. I'm, you know, you know, politically I'm fine with it. Um, but uh <laughs> that one took me a second. I I would love it if they wore that hat configuration that hat color configuration on the road they could even have the angel that has the little uh, you know it's not the straight lines the little spikes on the side well, this would is, you this, have like up this is the batting yeah. practice hat yeah. yeah that should be their road mm-hmm. that should be the road hat yeah a little navy Absolutely in there should be the road hat yeah i love it i love it. i've been That's looking a, for this hat for years i saw it like yeah. 10 years ago it went away then these became their bp hats and i was like oh i gotta get one yeah i mean i i something i'm gonna do a thing because sometimes the uh spring training hats are better than the regular hats mm-hmm. except for like the angels the, they're always boring <laughs> the, the rangers have one where the t is in the state of texas yeah that's beautiful and the uh the astros have one where the star is in a circle it looks a little bit like a sheriff's badge and then the royals has the kc with the crown on the top mm-hmm. and i thought those those should be their hats yeah all right yeah. um one last thing i want to talk about i'm a base as i said i'm a baseball fan through and through uh, I, I, I'm not an Angels fan, but I would like to see Mike Trout win a World Series title, and I would prefer him win it with the Angels um, rather than, you know, Paul Molitor winning a title with the Blue Jays was cool, but it would have been cool if he won it with the Brewers. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's the whole thing. Um, I, I think we can all admit that we're probably – done seeing Mike Trout playing 150 games at an MVP level in center field. But can he become a first baseman and return and just and be at least give us at least the the latter half of Frank Thomas? I mean, just I mean, I just I want to see. I, I refuse to believe we're saying goodbye to Mike Trout. Yeah, yeah, it's it's tough because you know with the injuries he's had over the last few years, there's a lot of conversation of oh well he can move out of center field, he could play a corner, he could make that move to first base, he could be a Full time DH if they need him to. Now that you know, now that Shohei is gone, they have that option. Um, but the problem is, is the last time 
he went out, he was on that rehab assignment in AAA. He felt the he felt the pain in his knee while he was batting. And so and it turned out to be scar tissue. It turned out to be a regular thing, but it concerned him enough to say something and get pulled out of the game. But that's the thing, Sully. It, it doesn't matter where he plays in the field. He's still got to run the bases. He's still got to take at bats. And so that part of it doesn't change. And with a meniscus tear, it's just one one two sharp of a corner around second base is all it takes for you to, to hurt yourself. And that's the biggest concern of all with Mike Trout. To be honest with you, as much as I love to see the power, I think it would it would serve him well to maybe drop some of that muscle weight and become a little leaner and become a little more limber rather than being so built and muscular. I, I feel like that's been a lot of the issue is just how big he is now. Um, when, you know, when he first came up, obviously as a rookie, you're a young guy and you're just now putting on, putting on the weight, putting on the muscle as yourself, obviously. And, uh, and, and so for him to maybe go a little bit leaner and kind of rework that might help stop some of these injury issues. Like last year, the hamate bone in his hand broke. You can't, you can't help that. But before that, it was a back issue. And before that, it was a calf issue. And this year it's the meniscus tear. So there's got to be something that they can do to help get him leaner and meaner, I guess you could say. Well, I hope you're right. I hope you're right because I don't want to see the end of it. Well, yeah. look, there's going to be a lot going on. A lot of trades are going to be coming around. Eric Fede was just traded to the Cardinals. Oh. Uh, a lot of weird things are going to be happening here. Uh, I guess the Cardinals are are going for it. But, hey, look at uh, John. Uh, do the Angels and A's play each other again? No, that was it. That was the That's the it. Last All right, series. we're done. Mer- mercifully, yes. <laughs> All right. So, uh see, see you in Sacramento. All right, man. Well, tell people where they can listen to your show. Yeah, we are uh, at Locked on Angels on Twitter and at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram if you want to follow us there. And then of course, you can find us uh at Locked on Angels wherever you get your podcasts or even on YouTube. Come on over to YouTube, get in the comment section. We'd love to hear from you there as well. And we're at Locked On A's on Twitter or whatever it's called now. And on Instagram, I'm your pal Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Talking about the teams that in 2014, this would have been a hell of a matchup. (laughs) This has been a Locked On A's, Locked On Angels crossover. Don't trade Cespedes. He's John Frisch. I'm your pal Sully.